We start off now with a, a number of talks which I think are going to help us uh, make a really good start to, to today and the next day. And our first speaker that I'd like to introduce is Ella McSweeney. Ella qualified in zoology before becoming a journalist, radio producer, radio and TV presenter, especially known for her work on Ear to the Ground, the RTE farm program that averages 360,000 in its audience uh, every week, and I think it gets more on repeats. So Ella knows a thing or two about engagement, and she's here to talk to us today. Ella McSweeney, please. Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, many thanks uh, for that welcome, Kieran. Um, and thank you also uh, to the Minister, to Hannah Hamilton and her team for undertaking this mammoth uh, event. So it, I don't think it's necessary for us to list the reasons why we are all here um, and why we need to be so concerned. There is no shortage of facts, scientific facts, that are screaming at us saying one thing. In Ireland, we are losing it. We're losing the species and habitats, the clean air and the climate, but we're also losing, I think, the ability to understand, to care and engage with nature and the huge task of ecological restoration that needs to urgently happen. Uh, I hope this works. There you go. This is, um, I'm sure some of you recognise this amazing man. This is the wonderful Wendell Berry, a poet, writer and, most importantly to him, farmer from Kentucky. And he's someone who has engaged constantly throughout his long life in the question of where we are, how we got here, and where we need to go when it comes to land use, uh, ecology, and, and nature. And he said, uh, whether we or our politicians know it or not, nature is party to all our deals and decisions, and she has more votes, a longer memory, and a sterner sense of justice than we do. And like so many things that Wendell says, I think he is more than right. But let's talk about actual, real votes, political votes. How engaged is our society in the fate of our species and habitats? And does enga in that engagement, if it's there, translate into votes? And how can people be helped and nudged to engage more? So from the research, uh, we know a bit about how best to engage people in ideas. Simple things, people are affected, as you know, by stories, not necessarily statements and facts. They're moved by positive stories, not doom and gloom. Repetition is the key, and women tend to have a stronger degree of concern for the environment than men. I would also add to that uh, something that may, uh, you may not agree with, but I would add that most people don't actually know or really understand what the word biodiversity means. I think this nature crisis comes at a time when the world has gone uh, a little bit mad. We have the politics of me, a focus on individualism, and a disengagement with politics, and that is a very, very dangerous thing when it comes to nature. Uh, I think it's a bit early to talk about love, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. Uh, I, I really believe, having uh, reported on these things for, for quite a long time, that one very important way to engage and enrich our relationship with the living world is to talk more about emotion and love and affection. People understand it, they relate to it, and it can stimulate action. Uh, so what can we learn from those who are doing it well? Uh, it is those who own the vast majority of the land in Ireland who need to be engaged. We are all at absolutely nothing unless they are on board. Um, taking an ecological approach, engaging with nature from the beginning for farmers and landowners can avoid the kind of catastrophic impacts on habitats and species that we have seen and we are seeing. Uh, many of you, excuse me for taking a drink of water. Many of you will recognize this gentleman. I think he might be here. Uh, this is uh, Donal Sheehan, an intensive dairy farmer in Cork. Um, and the story of Donal and also Tony Nagel, the ecologist, is in many ways an ode to nature. It, uh, they set up the Bride Project and this is a project that was motivated by the love of a farmer for his land, his farm, for his, the species that were there and are there on his farm, but also, most importantly, the species that should be on his farm and aren't there anymore. And so Donal and um, Tony uh, went to the EU uh, and to the Department of Agriculture, and they got public money and brought on board the farmers in Donal's uh, valley, and they are slowly looking at their farms in a totally new 
way. It is new to them, perhaps not necessarily new to generations gone before. Um, it is an enriched and nature-rich view of the land. Um, Dono's project at this hyper-local scale, using public money, has heralded a kind of renaissance of species in Ireland from a farmer who saw his purpose as beyond merely the bottom line. But also, let's be real here, aside from their leadership, uh, it was money and is money that has created this astonishing project to bring life back to the landscape in the Bride Valley. Uh, Donal is in many ways fighting the kind of shrug that many people can make when you talk about nature. For example, he brought back the cuckoo on his farm after decades of it not being there, using a very, very simple measure that didn't harm his own bottom line, just leaving a, a, a bit of nettles in the fields. Uh, it was a bird that had gone, it rebounded, and Donal made that happen, and I think this is absolutely phenomenal. He's a nature crusader, but when I first talk, heard uh, Donal talk about his project, it certainly spoke to me as a kind of love letter to nature and his land, and I think that's a very, very powerful thing. So I'm gonna stop talking now, and I think we have obviously two days of a conference full of human voices. So I thought I would end, um, if you'll indulge me, with 60 seconds of um, the sounds of some of the species that we don't hear anymore in Ireland, and my children possibly will never hear in, in this country. They've either, either gone extinct or their numbers are so critically low that it's very, very unusual to hear them. Um, these are the species whose names we don't talk about anymore. Uh, and it is an astonishing thing, the resilience of nature, and a very reassuring thing that we can bring these missi missing species back if we want to. And that's it. Have a wonderful conference. Thank you very much.